If it is June or July and you are getting super frustrated because the tips of your new raspberry canes are shriveling up and dying, it is not your fault. And it is also most likely not a lack of water. It's been happening to me too and I just want to share with you guys what is going on and what we can do about it. If you're new around here, then hi, I am Kiri and welcome to my small but mighty garden. And I am so happy that you are here. And if this is not your first visit to the garden, then I am happy to have you back. So what we need to do is we need to talk about what is going on with our raspberry shoots, specifically the new ones that are coming up this year. These are some of my raspberries that I dug out of the garden last year and I have moved into 20 gallon pots. And about a week or two ago, I started to notice that something was going on. Because this is my first time growing them in containers, my first thought was honestly that I was not giving them enough water and that's why the tips were drying up. But with a little bit more digging and research, I realized that there was something else going on. It was a very specific pest called the raspberry cane borer. They're a mostly black beetle. They have really long antennas and a little yellow piece in front of their long skinny body. I actually managed to get a picture of one the other day and I'll put that up on the screen so you can see at least the ones that I had what they look like. So these little beetles are only about half inch to an inch long. Noisy people on motorcycles are interrupted in my video. Now luckily, if you are present in your garden and you notice what's going on, they're pretty easy to deal with and they don't tend to do a lot of damage unless you are infested with them. So let's go ahead and flip the camera and then I'll show you what the damage actually looks like so you can go and check on your plants and see if you're seeing the same thing. Here's what you're gonna be looking for, the tips of the new canes and it's only on the new Primo canes. So these are the first year's growth. You're gonna see the top is gonna start withering and flopping over and that's usually when you're gonna notice that something is going on. Luckily. I still have lots of beautiful raspberries on here so that is a good thing but if we come over here I'm just gonna pinch off this piece so I can show you what's going on this here is the telltale marks so you are going to have a band it's about an inch wide and there's going to be holes all the way around that's where the female has gone and punctured it and then she's also going to do that at the bottom and then in between those two marks she is going to lay a single egg with the damage that's been done the tip starts to dry up and then it'll start to shrivel more and go darker I have another one over here where we're seeing that that's progressed a little bit further for the first winter the larva once it hatches it's going to make its way down the cane and it's gonna spend its first winter within the first inch or two. This telltale banding or girdling as it is called is going to happen usually within the top six inches of the new cane so you can look for that close to the tip. So these pests have a two-year life cycle and the females are going to emerge from the ground in June and then they're going to make their way up to the top of the new canes, the primo canes, and then they're going to go ahead and start laying their eggs. Because there is this two-year life cycle we really want to stay on top of it and look for the damage and deal with it as quickly as possible so that we can prevent future damage. So the eggs are going to hatch in July which is where I am right now. So I need to get on top of this before those larvae start making their way too far down the cane because I want to make sure that I get them out and that the problem is dealt with and will not repeat within the next two years. So if you don't deal with this in the first year where we're seeing that girdling and the eggs are laid and the larvae are just hatching, then what's going to happen is in the spring of the second year, those larvae where they've spent that first winter about two inches below those girdles, they're going to make their way further down the cane, making their way all the way down into the soil. They're going to spend their second winter in the soil where they're going to in the next spring, they're going to pupate there. And and then the adults are going to emerge in June and start the cycle all over again. The key to dealing with a raspberry cane borer is really just to be on top of it, to notice that damage as soon as it happens, and to remove those affected parts of the canes as soon as possible. Going into next year, I'm going to be looking as soon as it hits June, I'm going to put a reminder in my phone now to make sure that I remember to do it next year and I can get on top of it even sooner. So now that we know what's going on, the question is, what do we do about it? Luckily, the solution is very simple. You don't need any pesticides. All we have to do is cut off the affected tip of that primo cane. We're gonna wanna make sure that we're gonna go below because like I said, it's gonna the larvae is gonna go about one to two inches below the girdles. I'm just cutting a little bit lower just to be sure and to take off that whole affected piece. All we're going to do is the girdles are there. I'm gonna just err on the side of caution and cut it off. There's a close-up of the girdled area and I went a good four inches below that. All right, so I have the cane here and I have an exacto knife. I'm gonna see if I can see anything in here. I don't know if it's gonna work and I'll hold it up to the camera once I get this cut open. 
I'll try and zoom in. There's definitely something going on there, but it doesn't look like it's made its way down the cane yet, which is a good thing, so we got them out. In terms of how do we prevent this in the future, doing the pruning and getting rid of them in the year where you notice it is going to help. If there are wild raspberries around, you could remove those, but pretty much all you need to do is to prune your raspberries and stay on top of it, keep them neat and tidy, and hopefully you shouldn't have too many issues with this pest. Luckily, even though I have the raspberry cane borers, I've still been getting lots of beautiful and delicious raspberries, and Bacon has been out here harvesting them if I turn my back for a second because she absolutely loves them. Bacon, are you hunting for raspberries? There we go, her favorite treat. Bacon, are you eating the raspberries? Yeah? Maybe a little bit, Mom. I really hope that you found this video helpful and if you want to see one of my favorite ways to grow vertical in my small but mighty garden then you can check out this video of me setting up one of my green stalks.